They keep you anchored in the reptilian part of the brain, which is instinctual. Instead, you should aim to engage your higher mind, located in the neocortex, where critical thinking occurs. This is why Neo from the Matrix is named Neo. He escaped the programming of his lower mind and activated his critical thinking faculties. Consider the parallels in the number 7. 7 chakras, 7 metals, 7 days of the week, and 7 planets. They are all interconnected. Some Christians believe that 144,000 will ascend to heaven. This number is thought to represent a frequency required to transition from the root to the crown chakra. This is because the head symbolizes heaven, while the heel represents hell. In his journey, Sonic must collect seven emeralds to transform into his godly form, Super Sonic. Similarly, to reach a divine state, we need to balance our seven energy centers, culminating in the activation of the higher mind located in the crown chakra. Your body can be likened to the Garden of Eden. The serpent, representing the Kundalini energy, resides in the tree of knowledge of good and evil, symbolized by your spine. In some traditions, the two energy channels running along the spine are named Ida and Pingala. These channels lead to the pineal and pituitary glands. In the Bible, this connection is described as a land abundant with milk, pineal gland, and honey, pituitary gland, representing the sun and moon respectively. The sun characterized by its electric and masculine energy, contrasts the moon's feminine and magnetic essence. These two spiritual glands are housed within what can be termed the holy grail of our anatomy, the neck and head. The brain, often called the body's command center, is a marvel of evolutionary development. To truly grasp its complexity, one must understand the dual dimensions that govern its function, the reptilian brain and the neocortex. The reptilian brain, or the basal ganglia, is the oldest part of the brain in terms of our evolutionary history. It can be found in the brain's core and is responsible for primitive survival instincts such as aggression, dominance, territoriality, and ritualistic behaviors. When we speak of knee-jerk reactions or being on autopilot, we are alluding to the functions governed by this ancient part of our brain. For many, this instinctual and reactionary part dominates their responses and dictates their decisions. Now, on to the neocortex. This section of the brain evolved much later and envelops the older parts of the brain. It governs higher order brain functions and is divided into two hemispheres. The functions housed here are what differentiate us from many other species. Reasoning, abstract thought, creativity, and of course, critical thinking. Understanding the interplay between the reptilian brain and the neocortex is crucial. While the reptilian brain ensures our immediate survival, it is the neocortex that helps us thrive in complex social structures and allows us to innovate, plan, dream, and analyze. It's the neocortex that ponders over the universe's mysteries, invents life-altering technologies, and composes stirring symphonies. The pop culture reference of Neo from The Matrix aptly demonstrates the struggle between these two brain parts, trapped initially in a simulated reality akin to the unthinking, automatic responses of the reptilian brain. Neo's journey of breaking free and tapping into unparalleled capabilities mirrors our potential when we engage our neocortex. Yet, Neo's name isn't a mere coincidence. Neo translates to new hinting at the newly evolved, higher functions of our brain, the neocortex. The movie subtly emphasizes the importance of breaking free from base instincts, the matrix, to access higher consciousness and thinking, the real world. In our daily lives, we're faced with countless situations that tug at our reptilian responses. Stress, for instance, often sends us diving deep into our primal instincts of fight, flight, or freeze. However, with awareness, we can consciously choose to engage our neocortex, pausing to assess situations, reflecting on consequences, and making informed choices. Recognizing when we are operating out of instinct and when we are drawing on our advanced cognitive capabilities is pivotal. It allows us to understand our behaviors, decisions, and reactions better. 
Furthermore, it enables us to deliberately evolve, encouraging practices and habits that strengthen our neocortex's role in our lives. The human body, with its intricate systems and capabilities, has been a source of fascination throughout history. By understanding the parallels between our anatomy and ancient spiritual texts, we can uncover deep insights into both our physiological and spiritual existence. One of the most compelling parallels is the comparison between our body system and the biblical Garden of Eden. The spine, a core structure that supports and connects the body, houses an even more profound energy. Within the yogic tradition, this energy is called kundalini. Often depicted as a coiled serpent at the spine's base, the kundalini remains dormant in many, awaiting the right conditions for its awakening. Much like the serpent in the Garden of Eden, the kundalini serpent holds great power. When awakened, it can rise through the spine, moving through the chakras or energy centers. This journey symbolizes spiritual growth and eventual enlightenment. The ascent of this energy can lead to profound changes in perception, heightened intuition, and a deeper connection to the universe. Adjacent to the spine are two intertwined energy channels, Ida and Pingala. These are central to many ancient spiritual traditions. Ida is often associated with the moon, representing calm, intuitive, and feminine energy. In contrast, Pingala is associated with the sun, symbolizing dynamic, rational, and masculine energy. Balancing these energies is crucial for holistic well-being and spiritual growth. The journey of the Kundalini, along with the balance of Ida and Pingala, culminates in the activation of two vital glands in the brain, the pineal and the pituitary. Some interpretations link these glands to the biblical land flowing with milk and honey. The pineal gland, sometimes called the third eye, secretes melatonin and is associated with intuition, milk. The pituitary gland, regulating various physiological processes, secretes several hormones essential for our well-being, honey. This duality, the pineal and pituitary glands, is also representative of our internal sun and moon. The pineal, with its electric or masculine energy, contrasts the pituitary, symbolizing the magnetic or feminine energy. Recognizing and harmonizing these dual forces can lead to a deeper understanding of oneself and the universe. By interpreting the human anatomy as a spiritual map, we can discover paths to healing, growth, and enlightenment. Understanding the roles and relationships between the Kundalini, Ida, and Pingala, and the pineal and pituitary glands can guide individuals in their spiritual journeys, offering practical insights for balancing and harnessing their innate energies. Numbers have an uncanny way of revealing truths hidden in plain sight. Their omnipresence in nature, history, and even our personal lives suggest that they can decipher anything if one knows where to look. The number seven has permeated our collective consciousness in various ways throughout history, suggesting a broader pattern or a hidden code embedded within our universe. Both in cultural practices and natural phenomena, this number recurs, signaling its significance. From time immemorial, the number seven has anchored itself in various civilizations' foundational narratives. Many religious texts reference seven heavens, while folklore often speaks of seven seas. Seven wonders of the world, seven virtues, seven sins. The list goes on. But why seven? What makes this number recur with such significance? In ancient Indian philosophy, the human body is believed to have seven primary chakras or energy centers. These range from the root chakra, concerned with basic survival, to the crown chakra, which relates to spiritual connection and enlightenment. This journey from the root to the crown represents our progression from base desires to higher consciousness, a journey of growth and evolution. Alchemy, the precursor to modern chemistry, held that there were seven sacred metals corresponding to the seven planets of ancient astrology. These metals, gold, sun, silver, moon, mercury, mercury, copper, Venus, iron, Mars, tin, Jupiter, and lead, Saturn, 
were essential elements in turning base metals into gold, both a literal and metaphorical transformation. Historically, seven celestial bodies were visible to the naked eye and were thus termed planets by ancient astronomers. Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. These same entities gave names to the seven days of our week, establishing a direct link between our daily routines and cosmic rhythms. Recognizing this relationship attunes us to the broader cosmos, making us realize that our existence is part of a grander design. In the realm of pop culture, the profound significance of the number seven is evident. Michael Jackson, the pop icon, knew the power of seven, consistently showcasing it with sevens emblazoned on his jackets. Similarly, Sonic, a renowned video game character, embarks on a mission to transform into Super Sonic. This transformation is only achievable after collecting seven emeralds, which symbolically represent the chakras. Just as Sonic reaches his zenith by acquiring all seven, humans too can unlock their full potential by synchronizing and balancing their seven energy centers or chakras. Want to delve deeper into the influence of numbers in your own life? Perhaps you've been overlooking signs hidden in your birth date, name, or even your house number. These are not mere coincidences. You'd be amazed at the revelations waiting to be uncovered, offering insights into the tapestry of your life. After watching this video, to explore this realm further and find out how numbers play into your personal journey, click the link in the description. I promise it will blow your mind with its accuracy. For centuries, the concepts of heaven and hell have been the subject of theological debates, spiritual contemplation, and cultural interpretations. While traditionally perceived as distinct realms, there's an emerging understanding suggesting these concepts might be allegories for internal spiritual states, directly linked to our very physiology. The book of Revelation in the Christian Bible mentions the 144,000 chosen ones. However, esoteric interpretations propose a deeper meaning. Instead of a fixed number of saved souls, some scholars argue that 144,000 is emblematic of a specific vibrational frequency. When achieved, this frequency can elevate one's spiritual state, leading to heightened awareness or enlightenment. In Eastern philosophies, the chakra system outlines a pathway of energy flow within the body, from the base to the crown. These seven primary chakras, or energy centers, represent various physical and spiritual facets of our existence. The base chakra, located at the base of the spine, is tied to survival instincts and primal urges, while the crown chakra, situated at the top of the head, connects us to higher consciousness. Drawing parallels between this chakra system and the concepts of heaven and hell presents a compelling narrative. If we were to visualize our body as this spiritual ladder, the heel becomes symbolic of the starting point, our grounded reality, representing challenges and base desires, akin to the traditional depictions of hell. Conversely, the head, housing the brain and the seat of consciousness, signifies enlightenment, knowledge, and connection to the divine or one's personal heaven. The path from the heel to the head is not merely physical, it symbolizes our life journey, marked by trials, growth, and eventual understanding. Each step, or each chakra, represents a phase of learning and evolution. By acknowledging this internal roadmap, we can start aligning our actions and thoughts towards achieving this optimal state of balance and awareness. For many, heaven and hell are tangible, distinct places. However, viewing them as internal states or stages of our spiritual journey can provide a more immediate, personal framework for self-improvement. This isn't about refuting religious teachings, but expanding our understanding, recognizing that these teachings may offer multi-dimensional insights. The Holy Grail has long been portrayed in literature and art as a chalice, or a dish with miraculous abilities. However, more esoteric interpretations suggest the grail might not be a physical object, but a symbolic representation of an elevated state of consciousness or spiritual awakening. 
One of the most powerful regions in the human body concerning spiritual awakening is the neck and head area. This region houses the brain and, more specifically, the pineal and pituitary glands. These glands play pivotal roles in our physiological processes and have been linked to deeper spiritual experiences and insights. Within this anatomical grail, the electric and magnetic energies converge. The pineal gland embodies the electric, or the masculine sun energy, while the pituitary mirrors the magnetic, or the feminine moon energy. The balance and interplay between these forces can lead to heightened spiritual awareness and an equilibrium that many seekers strive to attain. Understanding our body as the dwelling place of the Holy Grail brings with it a profound shift in perspective. Instead of looking externally for spiritual fulfillment, individuals can turn inwards. This inward journey can lead to transformative experiences where the seeker not only understands, but embodies the divine grace that the grail symbolizes. The quest for the holy grail is a timeless tale of seeking and discovery. While the narrative often points to external adventures, the true journey might very well be internal. By acknowledging the pineal and pituitary glands as potential gateways to this sacred experience, we pave the way for a deeper understanding of our spiritual potential. As we arrive at the conclusion of this video, please take into consideration that with every video I produce, I strive to uncover more evidence and offer a clearer perspective on the subject at hand. This video is a beacon for those with an insatiable thirst for knowledge, for the individuals who believe there's more to life, who recognize the miraculous nature of the human body, and who sense that somewhere out there, there are individuals privy to profound insights, secrets of transcendence, insights into the psyche, vibrational phenomena, wonders of the mind, energy mysteries, arcane knowledge, and spiritual attunements. I encourage you to embark on your own research journey. While I hope this video quenches your thirst for knowledge, I assure you that with every video, I will continue to refine my understanding by delving deeper into research, readings, and more.